Hi, I'm Nathan from Pi3G and this is everything about Raspberry Pi in 10 minutes. It all started in Britain in 2009. A team at the University of Cambridge that included Eben Upton, Rob Mullins, Jack Lang and Alan Mycroft noticed that fewer and fewer students were enrolling in computer science courses. For them the problem was low computer accessibility. For this they came up with the following solution. A small affordable single board computer. And so three years after the creation of the Raspberry Pi foundation the Raspberry Pi Model B was created. But why did they name it Raspberry Pi? The name is derived from Raspberry Pi. Fruit related names have long been popular in the computer industry. Think of apple, apricot or Adafruit for example. Furthermore, Pi is associated with the Python programming language, one of the most beginner friendly languages. So the name reflects the goal of getting young people interested in programming. But what is so special about the Raspberry Pi? The Raspberry Pi is a single board computer. A single board computer or SPC is a fully functional computer with microprocessors, memories, input output or I.O. and other features built on a single circuit board. Furthermore, the Raspberry Pi is ARM based. Unlike most Windows PCs, the Pi's CPU works with a reduced, less complicated instruction set. This makes the CPU design process easier, cheaper and faster. Another strength of the Raspberry Pi is that it runs Linux. Linux is free and provides access to a lot of open source software. This makes it easier for the user to get started with programming and also saves money. Besides that, Linux is considered to be more secure than Windows. Finally, one of the most striking advantages are the GPIO pins. GPIO means General Purpose Input Output and allows to connect almost any device to the Raspberry Pi. From simple electronic components like LEDs or motors to complex sensors. Thanks to interfaces like I2C, SPI or UART, they can be programmed, controlled or read by the Pi. Thus countless projects can be realized for beginners as well as professionals. Let's check out the different Raspberry Pi models. As mentioned before, the first model was the Raspberry Pi Model B. It was released in February of 2012 and came with a BCM2835 SoC as well as 256 MB of RAM, 26 pin GPIO and Ethernet. From October 2012 a 512 MB RAM version was available. As a side note, SoC means system on a chip, so all the components of a computer are included on one microchip. 2013 followed a simpler and cheaper Model A without Ethernet and only 256 MB of RAM. In 2014 the models A and B were improved and sold as models A plus and B plus. These were the first models with 40 pin GPIO. After the immediate success of the first Raspberry Pi generation the Raspberry Pi Foundation released the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B in 2015. It featured a BCM2836 or 2837 SoC, 1GB of RAM, Ethernet and 40 pin GPIO. Then in November of the same year appeared the Raspberry Pi Zero with a BCM2835 SoC, 512MB of RAM and an ultra compact form factor. In 2016 it was time for the third version, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. This single board computer has a BCM2837 A0 or B0 SoC, 1GB of RAM, 40 pin GPIO and for the first time wireless capabilities. The Raspberry Pi Zero received an upgrade in 2017 with the Raspberry Pi Zero W and the Raspberry Pi Zero WH. In general the W added to the Pi model denotes wireless capabilities and the H means that it has pre-soldered headers. 2018 followed the Raspberry Pi 3 model A plus and B plus. Again the A plus is a simpler version with only 512 megabytes of RAM and no Ethernet. The B plus has gigabit Ethernet and dual band wireless capabilities. The Raspberry Pi 4 model B which is the newest version was released in 2019. It has a BCM2711 SoC 
gigabit ethernet and dual band wireless as well as 1 to 8 gigabytes of RAM. The most unusual Pi came out in 2020. The Raspberry Pi 400 is a keyboard that contains a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with 4 GB of RAM. In 2021 Raspberry Pi Foundation started to make their own silicon. They released the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is the first microcontroller. It is based on Raspberry Pi's RP2040 chip and has 264 KB of RAM and 2 MB onboard flash memory as well as 40 pin GPIO. In October of the same year they released the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. This improved version of the Zero W has a SIP or system in a package based on the Raspberry Pi 3. With 512 MB RAM and wireless as well as 64-bit capabilities it almost reaches the Pi 3's performance. They followed it up in 2022 with the Raspberry Pi Pico W, which is similar to the Pico but has 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.2. Let's compare the models by the most important specs. Let's start with the most important, which is processing speed. We can clearly see a steady increase in CPU speed over the years. While the Raspberry Pi 1 started out with a single core at 700 MHz, the Raspberry Pi 2 already had a quad-core 900 MHz CPU. The Pi 3 A Plus and B Plus clocked in at 1.4 GHz and the Pi 4 has an astonishing 1.5 to 1.8 GHz. Of course, the Pi Zero and Zero 2 have slightly lower processing speeds with a single core of 1 GHz for the Pi Zero and 4 cores at 1 GHz for the Pi Zero 2. That means that the Zero 2 is even faster than the Raspberry Pi 2. The Pico and Pico W come with two cores at 125 to 133 MHz, which is expected since they are microcontrollers. Another important spec is the amount of RAM or random access memory. The Raspberry Pi 1 has 256 to 512 MB of RAM, depending on the model. The Raspberry Pi 0, 0 2 and 3A Plus have 512 MB of RAM and the Pi 2 and Pi 3B have a gigabyte of RAM. The biggest increase came with the Pi 4, which is available in 1, 2, 4 or 8 GB versions. The Pi 400 also has an astonishing 4 GB of RAM. As expected, the Pico and Pico W have considerably less RAM at 264 KB, which is more than an Arduino Nano, but less than the ESP32. The Raspberry Pi truly stands out when it comes to power consumption, especially when compared to traditional desktop PCs. This remarkable feature can be attributed to two key factors, the ARM architecture and the all-in-one board design, which enabled the Raspberry Pi to draw only a fraction of the power that standard desktop PCs require. When we examine the data, we can observe a significant improvement in power consumption from the Pi 1B to the Pi 1A. This improvement is a result of a more energy efficient design. As we progress through the models, we notice a slight upward trend in power consumption up to the model 3A+, with an increase of approximately 100 mA. However, when considering the substantial increase in computing power over this time span, this additional power consumption is relatively insignificant. Among the various models, the Model 3B Plus and 4B consume the most power, with the Model 4B drawing around 550 mA. Given that the Raspberry Pi operates on 5 volts, this translates to a power consumption of only 2.75 watts. Interestingly, the Pi 400, despite being faster, is more energy efficient than the Pi 4B. Additionally, it's worth noting that all the Pico and Zero models exhibit exceptionally low power draw, including the new Pi Zero 2W. This emphasizes Raspberry Pi's commitment to energy efficiency even in its smaller and more compact models. Finally, let's get to the applications. The Pi can do almost anything you can do on your desktop PC and more. You can use a wide variety of programming languages on the Pi, ranging from C to Python and even Rust. Also, the GPIO pins allow you to connect any electronic device. Thus, you can use the Pi for Robotics, AI, as a media center, 
desktop computer or even as a server, just to name a few applications. You can even build Pi clusters for more computationally heavy projects. Rather than asking what you can do with the Pi, you should ask which Pi is suited for a particular project. For simpler tasks like controlling motors or reading sensors, the Pico or Pico W should be more than sufficient. Although you can easily do these kinds of things with any Raspberry Pi, the Pico and Pico W are by far the cheapest options. For projects that require an operating system, the Pi Zero and Pi Zero 2 are two very cost efficient options. Also, due to their ultra compact footprint, they are frequently used in the embedded realm. The Raspberry Pi 1 was discontinued, hence it is very unlikely that you will get hold of one. But even if you did, the Pi Zero would be cheaper and with the Zero W you would even have wireless capabilities. The Raspberry Pi 2 is still available, but the price is almost the same as for the Raspberry Pi 3. Since the Pi 3 easily outshines the previous version, it is the better option, although availability can be a problem. In this case, you can consider picking up a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 W as it nearly reaches the Pi 3's performance. Finally, the Pi 4 is not too far behind your everyday PC. It is more than capable of streaming YouTube videos or running games. You can even train your AI models in a reasonable amount of time. To speed things up, you can build a Pi cluster. These are good at processing bigger amounts of data in parallel or working on multiple tasks at once. By now, you should have a solid understanding of the Raspberry Pi and why it's truly special. I think it's fair to say that Raspberry Pi has achieved its goal of making programming more accessible. However, there is so much more to explore beyond what we covered in this 10 minute video. So if you have any questions, I would be thrilled to hear from you in the comments. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel as we will post videos like this on a weekly basis. Also, check out our store by zero to pick up everything you need for your Raspberry Pi projects.